This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. All right, welcome back to your favorite wild podcast. I'm Ryan Carter. I'm here sitting here with the great John King. As always, this is presented by Pilot Games. Make sure you play your ear or your e tabs, not your ear tabs, your e tabs, Karen, because when you play Pilot Games, your community wins. And uh, well, we all love our communities. I, I mean, um, speaking of, White Bear Lake 10 UA girls had their first scrimmage and uh, it went well. Well, you won? We did. Okay, now you, you told me something the other day that this will be a little youth hockey corner. I think the fans <laughs> will like this. You had your parents' meeting. Yeah. Where you, this is an opportunity to lay down the law and let people know kind of what type of regime they should expect. But you had a great story about how parents can give feedback to you as the head coach. I want you to state that for the listeners. I think they'll really like, <laughs> I think they'll really like the detail you put into how specifically to give the head coach feedback. Well, uh, okay, so I didn't come up with this on my own through advice, uh, a little philosophy on how to accept parent feedback yep. in regards to really anything that might come up throughout the course of the season. More than likely their child's performance, but yeah, go on. Or their usage or whatever it might Power be. play. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's just simply that uh, any and all issues, will I, I'm happy, we're, the yeah. staff will be happy to address. Open door, but... What but the, the door is going to be extremely open. What's the contingency, though? There's two it, requirements if you're going to give some direct feedback. Text messages, phone calls, and emails will not be returned. Not accepted. I'll be found at the rank and uh, open to talk to anybody about anything right there in the open. In a public space. Yes, and uh, the only thing I ask in return is that your child is also present when we're discussing this. So whatever they say, the kid hears. I love this. This is like a high school breakup. <laughs> if you're going to break up with someone, you're worried it might be volatile. It's got to be in a public place. So I, I like that you took some of those. It was. It's not like that, though. It's not like doomsday prepping. It's just quite simply that not anything that's appropriate for two adults to talk about in regards to the kid's play, the kid should be able to hear as well. That's all I feel about it. Uh, public and with, with play. Uh, well done. So, hey, somebody asked me the other day, they said, how's the wild season going? It was like a, a person that wasn't, you know, not a Minnesota fan kind of. And uh, I, I found myself having to answer that question. And I think it's been a little topsy-turvy, a little Jekyll and Hyde. Um, I fully expected us to, like, shut out Columbus three to nothing because this is kind of like the wild way, right? We... We get loose and don't play wild hockey, and we get into the seven to six, eight to seven crap, and then we usually recalibrate, come back, and just dominate somebody. Typically, maybe a lesser opponent, and then maybe we get loose again. But I thought it was a little concerning seeing that fifty shots from Columbus. Um, what, so, what was your answer to the question? I said like, Jekyll and Hyde. I said uh, it's early. Um, I'm really trying to follow our format for this podcast of let's not get too high let's not get too low you know let's stay positive but uh it's been it's been a little a little topsy-turvy early I mean that Columbus game watching those shot totals and they're like this is the most shots in a Minnesota professional hockey game since 1938 like I was it was concerning uh, I don't know what we were doing wrong that they were getting that many pucks to the net. Do you, you feel like an insider now? You kind of have to have an answer. Like we're once upon a time, like I don't really know would have yeah. been an acceptable answer, but now you're, you feel like you have to come up with something. Well, I was. I don't know if you, you didn't do the game, so you might have seen this. Did you see when they put the shot chart up for Columbus? And I, it, I didn't see it on the jumbotron, but I saw it on the TV. On the TV, yeah. and it looked like a slot machine had just dumped out like 5,000 quarters and it was just the entire offensive zone cover with shot attempts because they had like 100. But yeah, I, what's your take on, uh, what would you say this season? I said how, Jack how great are those shot charts, by the way? They're pretty cool with the little, the discs and their 3D and... Yeah, it paints a pretty good picture too because that one that you're talking about specifically, I think they had like 100 attempts or something yeah, like that, but they only 50. missed the net on like 14. <laughs> Everything was hitting the net or getting blocked, but 
Um, and it differentiates those uh, yeah, those shot charts. So the other one they did great. was, I think when you were doing the game, they did Erickson X goals yes. in his career, and nothing was further than, like, three feet from the <laughs> snot bubble. <laughs> like, like, the guy hasn't scored a goal further than, like, four feet from the, the actual net. Isn't that amazing? It's so cool. I was like, this is, wow, that's some data. Right. You know, that might it, be the bumper guy on the power play. He might be good at that. But it also illustrates a picture on how he plays the game. Yeah, he's a. You tell kids all the time, go to the net. That's where you score goals. You can carve out a living. And then you watch Erickson Eck play and you see a lot of stuff he does around the rink. But with his goal scoring, it is in the paint. It's almost like he doesn't even shoot the puck from outside there. And then you start to watch the game from, you know, a different lens and you realize like he doesn't even, he's not, he's never on the perimeter. Like he's not anywhere but net front. And it's kind of amazing, but like I said, he's carved out a pretty decent living and a pretty good start. And seven points to start the year through five. What would you say if somebody asked you, some some guy from Delaware, you see him at an airport, he's like, hey, how's the Minnesota Wild season going? What would be your answer? I would say they're, they're kind of just like getting by right now. I, I don't feel like the club has found their identity, so to speak. Last year – you know, early losses, then it Chasing was like it. hunker down, found their identity through defense and different things. I would say that this team, despite the fact that it's a lot of the same faces, are, they're still trying to find like what like what they are. You've got, remember if you're uh, an old listener to the podcast and we had, uh, what is it, Yellowstone? Where it was this cast of characters, and you're trying to you're trying to create like the bunkhouse, and you know who are the different characters. Right now, it feels like the club has all these characters, but there's just no script for them, and yeah. they they haven't all bought into what the show is going to be, what it needs to be about, and because of that, there's enough talent on the roster to carve out some time and and you know get some points and not fall too far behind uh, the eight ball. But then at the same time, you look at where they've been and because of the salary cap situation you know depth is always probably going to be an issue there's a lot of young talent in Iowa but are they ready to jump right in and be impact players it uh, I, I don't really know but you've got 14 million in dead cap space then you've got 14 million plus out I should it's actually 16 million out right now with injury you're playing with next to I mean you're below the floor with what you have on the ice in terms of money and not trying to make an excuse, but th- I mean, that is significant. You take 28 million or 30 million off of anybody's roster right now. And if you're in a game, I would say that, that that's pretty impressive. You go lowest team in the NHL in terms of salary cap floor, there's still, I mean, they've got more money spent and there's a direct correlation between money spent and production. There just is. There are bad contracts, but at the same time, they're getting along uh, pretty well without big pieces. But I think it's been illustrated. And now they, like again, Boldy and Spurgeon are big pieces to this puzzle. Without those guys, all of a sudden, it just, it looks different out there. And and it, it has been. It's you know I got a text at one point this season. Somebody said we look fifteen million dollars poorer. Was all the text said? It was probably a game we were losing. And I do think people forget the competitive rebuild we're doing here, right? I mean, this is like having one hand tied behind your back. And I think I think that's why I have anxiety because I'm just waiting. This is a terrible Minnesota sports fan thing, but I'm just waiting for the wheels to like really fall off. Like just be like, <laughs> yeah, they. God, I mean, you know, Moose and Spurge and all these guys, they 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 basically bridged us through the, you know, the valley of death. And uh, but eventually, you know, it was too much because they it is pretty extraordinary what we're doing, um, you know, making the playoffs, uh, finishing high when we are operating from a major de- deficit, our own decisions making that deficit. Mm-hmm. But still, um, it's no excuse. But I I. It's, you know, I just, I want them to keep, I just want to, every win we get, every deposit we make, um, because to me, it's all about getting to that second season, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's hard. Right. Teams are better. 
I mean, Adam Fantilli is a scary human on the Columbus Blue Jackets, right? I mean, anybody can beat anybody. Yeah, no question about it. And I think you can look at it, too, and I, I touched on this, like the broadcast maybe against Montreal. It's just it feels like Murphy's Law is kind of rearing its ugly head, like anything that can go wrong will, and at the worst possible time. Like you're on a road trip, Matt Boldy gets hurt in the first game. Um, Goligoski gets hurt the following day in practice. Not enough time to get a person there. They're going to play short. You know, it's um, Jared Spurgeon's injury is significant, but not significant enough to want to put him on IR because you don't know when he's going to get back. So you're not going to get any salary cap relief in that regard. Matt Boldy, same. Like, um, how, how how long is he going to be out? He's out now. We don't know exactly. And then you think about like your offense and special teams and top half of your lineup. Both those guys fit in right there. Like you're, you know, it was almost like, hey, this is a good squad to start the year as long as we can stay healthy. And that was one of the things we touched on early is this group's going to need. They had I think one guy last year play 82 games. They're going to need six, seven, eight guys to play 82 games, and boom, right off the bat, you've got three guys out. And yeah, we get cut. Contributors. We get cut. It goes straight into bone and muscle right. this year. I mean, it's that's why having Boldy go down like he did, I mean, it's just uh, you kind of hold your breath uh, watching him because there just isn't that layer. I did see Vinny got called up today. Mm-hmm. You know, so and some, I think it's something different. So, again, you, you – and I don't know, but reading the tea leaves, like you don't want to do something drastic, you know, like like you're close and you don't want to blow it up, but you need to somehow create a, a, a spark. And, you know, I think if you look at the lines out there, they've been pretty steady from the start of the year, despite the fact that there hasn't been a tremendous amount of production. But at the same time, temper yourself offensively a little bit. The Wild are ninth in the NHL and goals scored right now. So they are they are scoring. Yep. So, um, but at the same time, they're not keeping it out of their net. So how do we, you know, how do the Wild try to figure that puzzle out where we don't blow up the lines, we get more production from our top guys because I think they want that top line being a little bit better five on five uh, without like just throwing a hand grenade on the lines and mixing absolutely everything up. The team is better if these lines work the way they are balanced and you can move pieces around. And what are you going to do? You maybe going to try Marco Rossi between Kaprizov and Zuccarello, or are you going to, I mean, uh, and actually Maroon looked pretty good on the wing between Erickson or on the wing with Erickson Eck and Johansson, but you start to, change some of these things and then you really change like the confidence and the feeling inside the room uh, the growth of the lines you sometimes want them to just battle through things and and work their way out of it I think that's kind of where they're at right now is like okay like it's not like a super critical point in the season at all super early but at the same time we don't want to fall too far behind in some of these things so I think the game against Edmonton is going to be a a big one and it was a pretty serious practice we're we're recording Monday day before Edmonton game it's pretty serious practice maybe a pp whack is that what uh, <laughs> what you thought i mean they they did they, they get worked hard or what i thought it was i mean i was tracking smiles out there and the game's supposed to be fun and when they're winning it's hooting and hollering and there was a lot of game faces out there today <laughs> it's like when they don't know when it's gonna end yeah you, you know didn't know there's some battle there's some seriousness to practice it was kind of like okay we, we're, we're starting to feel the pressure of not producing so today's practice was like a all right like you know you know, kind of like the mama bear grabbing the cubs by the back of the neck and saying, "You mean, let's go." Let's a lot of it's on. about length. It's uh, talking to the players. It's sort of like you go on a run, and they're trying to figure out when they're going to turn around, so they know they're halfway done. And, and Dean's like, "I'll let you know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know when we're going to head back. That's the worst. Like you, you will not enjoy any part of that run if yeah. you don't know. Even if someone told you we're going ten miles, at least you know. But he's. I mean, it seems like it was a long practice and. Like you said, uh, a lot of serious uh, faces. Uh, so no Connor McDavid. How uh, nice is I mean, that, now that's a gift. Murphy's Law. That's bumming out a lot of uh, hockey fans. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of people circled this one to see McDavid. Yeah, no now, doubt. Uh, but you know what? I'll take. I'd, I'd like to get a victory and uh, anything that makes that easier is a bonus. So, um, but yeah, he's out. Um, so we got Edmonton at home, and then the gentlemen head east. We got a back-to-back Philly, Washington, and then the Devils on Sunday before we uh, we record again. So it'll be interesting. Another four games that'll put us uh, 
You know, that'll put us almost 10 games into the season. Yeah. So I think... I think that's finally a legitimate sample size. What and, are we? Yeah, what yeah. are we, right? Right, but you're without a couple guys. You have to remember that. So 10 might be a little early. You get to 15 games. I think that's probably more realistic, you know, on where you're at. But Edmonton's had a tough start. Philly's been good out of the gates. Washington's been terrible. The Devils are good. So, yeah, we, we should kind of start to see the... Sculpture in the yeah. marble. Yeah, let's take a look around the league real quick. So Edmonton coming to town, and they were the, they were the favorite to win the Pacific. I mean, Vegas was up there with them, but you know Edmonton with McDavid and Drysaitel, they've got Ekholm. Seemed like they finally had their goaltenders situated, and the they're one and three. They're they're minus ten. And again, for me, goal differential is the is the best indicator of where a team is at. Yep. Sometimes the record doesn't fully indicate that, but if you look at it more often than not, it's the best differential is in first place. Worst differential is in last and place. And they're minus 10 goal differential? Right now they're minus 7. Jeez. So they're minus 7, 1, and 3. And they're getting – it's the same story in Edmonton. Fans in Edmonton have to be like, well, like, what's the deal? We have this top-end talent. We're supposed to be able to score. But at the end of the day, we can't keep the puck out of our own net. And that's where they're at. But the pressure's mounting. You see some of these interviews coming up, like post-game. Yeah. Dry sidle. Yeah. Like just so much anger. in the media. Yeah. What are you asking? And it's like you feel, you can see that they're feeling the pressure too. I think the media up there is brutal. So tomorrow's a collision, the the Edmonton game of two teams really trying to find themselves and establish themselves and reassert confidence within their own rooms. And I, 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 it should be a great game. Yeah, what's our goal differential so far? I think we're minus three. Okay. Which is probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah, we're minus three. I mean, again, you look at the standings, it's not pretty. They're five games in, but the while they're in sixth in the Central, um, you know, they're only ahead of Winnipeg and Chicago, but Colorado's a wagon right now. They're 5 and 0. Dallas is 3 0 and 1. Arizona, which, I mean, they just keep surprising me. They're 3 and 2. Nashville, St. Louis, they're right around that 500 mark, too. Um, but yeah, Wild. And it, it goes right in order, Colorado plus 13 in the goal differential, and then it goes down, Call, uh, Arizona plus four, Nashville plus two, and then you get into the negatives. It's St. Louis, Minnesota, Winnipeg, and Chicago, kind of all in order of goal differential. I like this goal differential. That's a, that makes it a lot easier. We are never we never profess to be an X's and O's podcast, but that's a good – that's like your golf handicap. Yeah. Basically, where are we at? Yeah, exactly. Well, it looks like the Wild are trying to break 100. Okay, we'll have to work on that. No, I like that. I like goal differential. I could, that's easy enough for me to understand, so – Let's get to the heavy hitters, because how like you're ninety sevens number one fan. Yeah, yeah, I got thoughts. Yeah, what are they? So here's a couple things. Okay, so Eck, I think we would all say X playing brilliantly. He's got seven points through five games. I think most people would have some level of frustration with ninety seven. He's got six points through five games. Um, Isn't that crazy? I. Uh, that that had been the greatest start of my life. Six point five. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and, and by all accounts, he hasn't. Uh, he's missed a lot of uh, looks that maybe he finishes on at other times. You know, kind of great passes, yawning nets, all that. But um, I think with Kirill, what I always look at is um, when he's having fun and smiling. And uh, did you see the other night? He he was wearing his helmet. In a way, I don't think I've ever seen an NHL player wear it in like twenty years. He just had his hair. It was like he had his hair and just stuck his helmet on top and the hair was in front. You know, every player in the NHL is going to push their hair back and then put on their bucket. Um, and he just looked um, like he's – it's a lot of work, you know. And uh, um, and they're, they're really getting some of those little laser beam passes back and forth, him and Zuccarello doing their ESP thing. But for whatever reason, um, some of those he's just not – He's not finishing on, um, so I, I'm not worried. I, I think I think he's just going to be just fine. Um, you know, I'm looking for a Kirill game. Yeah, that's you right. You know, that's Kirill right. has games where he just um, wins the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you can kind of feel it coming. I think we're that's going to happen soon. It might be this Edmonton game with McDavid out, and and maybe we have a uh, you know all the spotlight goes on him. But I think I, I'm not worried. Um, 
it'll be fine. But, uh, but yeah, you know, six points in five games. Would we like to see him up closer to 100 points this year? Absolutely. But I don't think he's played his best hockey, and he's still um, you know, on the scoreboard for sure. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. And I don't think we're alone in waiting for the Kirill game. I go back to the Wild in Montreal playing 19, hoping that those extra minutes would make it like Kirill's game. You know, and just like a statement. Okay, now you know we're off to the races. And I thought, like, even OT against Columbus, like, like you're waiting for the puck to touch his tape, and then for it to just be excitement for the next two minutes. You know, and it, it didn't materialize. And you just keep waiting for the the for him to circle the wagons, um, two and ten around the ice, make a pass, find a lane. You know catch this one timer put it where nobody else can and then the wild win in ot like that's like the exciting moment that is missed right now and i think you're you've you've absolutely nailed it it's it's not like it's bad like he's getting the chances and eventually they're going to go in but uh, we're waiting for that shift and you throughout the game you can you can almost pinpoint a shift that he'll have or that that group will have where you're like okay this, yeah, this you is, see the the thigh this pad is, pop this out. is the start of it and um, those are probably a little bit more rare than they'd like to. Yeah, my notes, I, I, I just kind of peeked at the statistics, right? So Zuki's off to a, a strong start as well with seven points. I thought it was interesting. Mermis has three points. Uh, and then, you know, Brodeen last year didn't, didn't score a lot. He's been kind of – he's got three points. And if you kind of think of the plus minus, I always look at just the, the top and the bottom. So you see uh, – Really, we only have two plus players, Brodeen plus five and Faber plus two. And then you got Midzi minus seven. Um, you know, so you kind of start, if you just look at those as the outliers, um, you know, so I I don't know. I think we've been just kind of uneven. Um, we didn't have a, it wasn't disastrous, the start, but we don't know what we are yet. And, and we should probably start figuring it out pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But look at, let's just look at Middleton, too. He's not a minus seven player. He's not. He's he's a stay-at-home D-man that's accountable defensively, and maybe he's just like a little bit. Uh, and it's been a rotation on the other side where he's accustomed to just having Spurgeon over there. Those two guys they work together. Now they're trying to figure stuff out, and it's a different player. And it's uh, it's crazy. The NHL is honestly like, uh, like it's about inches, and your decision making changes for a fraction of a second. The puck's in the back of your net. And um, I think that's probably the case there, too. But he's not a minus seven player. But once things start to settle down and there becomes some normalcy, like that number will start to disappear. For sure. I, uh, I'm i trying to think what else I had on um, just a couple. Uh, I'll give you some some random thoughts. Um, I did like getting a text in the, in the group text that just said, I'm intrigued by Dean's hair. That's all it said. That was just kind of let that simmer. I, I like that it's a little longer. Uh, I did see he uh, he had some choice words about the refs the other day. You know? Were we close to getting a fine? Uh, no, because I think he couched it. It's so like he, it's almost like he listened to the podcast. He's like, he, I'm not going to let cards yeah, get this he, one early. The way he phrased <laughs> it, I thought he did a nice job. Um, I uh, I did love this moment where there was a moment where uh, something had happened on the ice and a captain needed to talk to the ref. And they cut on the camera, and Zuki's talking to the ref, and Kirill's standing right behind him. It was the best. Like <laughs> he's just like, no. So I know I don't have the A, but here's he's what my lawyer. Here's what yeah. <laughs> here's what Kirill has a question about, um, and the ref's probably, probably like, why doesn't he ask me? Just, just this. Can you get back to us on this, and I'll relay it back to '97. I just thought that was so classic. I wanted to film it on my phone, but um, no, I'm excited. Uh, what do you think this East Coast trip will be like? Um, you know, how I mean, I, getting on the road together for an extended period of time. Are you doing that trip? Are you yeah. going on there? Okay, so you'll be out there too. Um, so yeah, you get the back to back. Well, so three games in uh, in four days. I think I think you have to. I mean, and Dean does not like to do this, and this isn't just coaching. This is he doesn't like to look that far ahead. Yep. But I think you you're you need to take the first four points of this trip. And Philly's no gimme anymore. They're hot start to the year. Yeah, and and again, that's where you can't look at the standings right now and be like, hey, you know, like this is what our team is, and take it for, you know, face yeah, it's like value. Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Philadelphia right now is three one and one, and 
I don't think they're going to finish above 500, but at the same time, they're playing good hockey right now. But they're beatable, and you've got to find a way to beat them. And then they're going to go to Washington, and it's a back-to-back. That's going to be tough. Uh, but Washington right now, too. And they're brutal. Not, yeah, they're not as bad. I don't think they're as bad as, as their numbers are, but they are bad. They're minus nine goal differential, uh, th- just three total points. I think they've got five goals scored in four games. Ovechkin, two games without a shot in a row. Yeah. First time, like, ever. Um, so, wash it. so you gotta, you got to take those first four points. Hey, Kirill will be dialed for that game, playing against the grade eight. As I recall, he had to sit out last year. Um, that was two years ago, I think. Yeah, so he, he'll be – I think that's a, that might be one to circle, uh, maybe look at some prop bets on uh, 97, having a big night against Tune into that one Friday night. Yeah, I could see him capital. trying to – Hey, grab the baton from the Russian, the Great Eight. Uh, that could be a that could be a crow game for that. Sure. Actually, would be an interesting debate on who the next great Russian would be. Like, I think he'd almost have to give it to Kucherov, Panarin, maybe. Like, I'm sure I'm missing a guy or two too. But where's Kirill ranked there? Gosh, he's close. Well, Malkin's had a great year too. Um, but Kirill's on the up. You know, yeah. a lot of those guys are. You know, Panarin might they're, be. They're peers. Yeah, they're kind of like right in there. But man, they they know how to make offensive players. That's for sure. Um, so and then you go to you go to Jersey, and then that's going to be the test. Yeah, days rest, high speed, days rest in Jersey, end of a road trip. Jack Hughes. Yep. Let's see what you're made of, and um, if they can somehow keep the studs quiet there, because it seems like Jersey can just score at will. Um, keep them quiet. Win your game. Play your game. Um, but that's that's probably the one where you're circling and saying this one will illustrate what we're made of. I agree. One thing I hope on this road trip, if uh, you know, if the Wild pack anything, um, you know, I would, I would hope that they would uh, bring some Jimmy's uh, sea salt caramel dip with them. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, you've been wanting to talk about this for I've, a lot I of know. heavy swallows. Yeah. Saliva's really going in the studio right That's now. That's right. If you were gonna, um, you know, if you happen to have a Jake Middleton style lunchbox and you were headed out to Philly and and uh, Washington and New Jersey. I would suggest you pack it with some Jimmy sea salt caramel dip. Great healthy snack. Dip some apples in it. Dip some pretzels in it. Uh, if you got a score sheet from one of the games, maybe roll it up. Just use it as a little pick and uh, just eat the caramel straight. It doesn't matter. Minnesota Company, find it right by the apples at your local grocery store, Cub or, or otherwise. And uh, just remember, don't you be messing with my dresses. See how I used a prop there? That's like carrot top. You know, that's extra. You didn't even see it coming. I didn't. No, I, I had it under it. the table. I could hear it. I could hear it. Yeah, so. And it, well, I knew you had something up your sleeve because you were salivating. Have you had. 15 uh, minutes. Have you had Speaking any. Speaking of salivating. Any major storms in if, your area? If you, were to, if you were to salivate over my house, I would be terribly concerned that some of that saliva would make its way into my house, especially if I was in one of the areas that got hit with a lot of hail this summer. Um, I was happened to be in one of those areas. And actually, you know what? From a customer service standpoint, we were sitting here on the podcast, and I got a call from Freddie Dean, the owner of Wild Construction. I got to call him back, but I'm guessing he's just calling to make sure that I'm happy with everything. The owner? Uh, yes. Okay. That's the kind of concierge service you get when you use Wild Construction. Uh, but in all seriousness, if you've been in one of the areas that was hit by hail or you have any concerns about the exterior of your home and um, its ability to make it through winter, give our guys at wildconstructionmn.com a look, a call, and uh, they'll get you taken care of. They've got a great uh, retail estimator tool to make sure that you know what it would cost to have some of this stuff done and a nice little map, too, that will illustrate if you've been in one of the areas, if you're unsure. Um, we all know that you guys travel in the summer, so if you happen to have one of those storms while you're out of town you didn't know for sure, check it out, uh, wildconstructionmn.com. Well done. So we have a guest on the pod. Um, I was, you know, I had this agent tell me, I think I've mentioned this before, there's milk guys, beer guys, and whiskey guys in the NHL. And I think Mr. Rossi would definitely be uh, – he's pretty wholesome. <laughs> he might be a wheat bread uh, and milk guy. I mean, I, I actually felt worse about myself as a person. after Like as a father? Just as a person. Like, like that your decisions weren't made around a, a crackling fire? So, yeah, if, <laughs> if, if we're trying to get into the Yellowstone bunkhouse – yeah. These stories were like the Waltons, like these stories like my parents used to tell of like, good night, John boy. <laughs> you know, like it was it was amazing. Um, some of the stuff I just it 
I, maybe some of that's the English, you know, the translation of the language. But I, I was just like, this is like Charles Dickens um, storytelling. I, so and I think people should root for this kid. I mean, COVID hit him hard. He was basically out for a year. Um, you know, last year didn't go as he wanted. It sounds like for the first time ever, uh, for the first time recently, he's really feeling like himself yeah. on the ice. And and I think he's been a bright spot. Now he hasn't he has been a bright spot. He hasn't racked up a ton of points, but I think that line is uh that line's been great. Rolling. That's that's unfortunate that and they Dean doesn't want to touch more. It. No, I, you're right. I don't that's think the he one does want to like, touch that's it. That's the one we're not gonna touch. Which which intrigues me a little bit. So I'm just gonna try to play the, the line switching game real quick to illustrate it. But I think right now with Johansson, Erickson, Eck, and uh, it's Maroon, that, that's one line. It's, it's a good line. But I think if you could take Johansson off that line, put Eck there, now you have what could be a potential grief line again. We're just miserable for a team to play against in the offensive zone. Can't separate them from the puck. You trust them defensively, so you almost get a grief. And then you'd get – You're saying switch who for who? Uh, Felino for Maroon. Okay. So then you've almost get like another grief. You, you just test it out. You see if you get a grief line kind of um, vibe. And then you'd get Johansson with Rossi and Gaudreau, a little more offense, a little bit more free-flowing. But Rossi has demonstrated to me early on that he's also a snap bubble guy. If you look at it, like he's going to the net, he's getting face washed. We talk about it in the, the interview with him. Is And I don't think he picked up on the humor or knew what we were talking about <laughs> when I said you're trying to take over Erickson X throne as the most face washed guy in the NHL. There's <laughs> some good awkward moments in this interview i would say there was there was lots of like you and i looking at each other like uh yeah he he i mean he's just such a good he's too he's too nice a good kid right like uh yeah he's very nice and but uh, there's that line's been good to compliment them and and wrap it up it's been good to the point where i don't think that they want to break that group up and that's a compliment to marco rossi in the middle he's been he's been really sound people are clamoring a little bit on my group text to see 23 up top with uh 97 and and 36 um now i don't know what that looks like but there's definitely uh i got hartman going last year too and i'm not saying hartman needs to get going but that line maybe needs a spark if you remember that opportunity was taken from him for they took a bit. it so fast last it was year. fast yeah and then, and then he then ended he up went out got hurt in the tenority fight got healthy came back earned it back and then was great down the stretch and obviously valuable in the playoffs and everything else so i think you're right last year maybe they learned like they took it a little yeah bit. i don't want to mess with hartsey i'm just saying people are that's a compliment yeah, they, to marco that uh that they're you know kind of right. wanting to place him in different places and and see what he can do but i uh yeah, I, I mean, I just, just got to get to it. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say besides you're going to be really wanting some schnitzel <laughs> and probably uh, Googling lingonberries on your phone after this interview. So this is Marco Rossi. Keep your mane tight with the folks at Duke Can and hardworking products for hardworking guys. We, you know, Austria has brought us a lot of good things. Mozart, Freud, Schwarzenegger, and also a nice centerman for the Minnesota Wild, Marco Rossi. He's our guest today. And now we'll get into the pronunciation because I know there's been multiple years of doing it right and wrong. Maybe you want to set the record straight. I, I'm probably the one that doesn't know. but We're going to have to talk to whoever is in charge of drafting these guys because we had to go through the same thing with Wallstead. It's like whatever. Yeah, Jesper yeah. Wallstead. Yeah. So we got that one. And But the podcast is committed to getting it right. So how do we pronounce your name? Uh, Marco Rossi, Marco Rossi, like that's how we say it back home, Marco Rossi, but, um, so it's like one word. Did that sound like, like Marco Rossi, Rossi. Marco, little roll Rossi. of the R, but, um, it's not Rossi. It's no. more like Rossi. Before you say Rossi, say Rossi. And so All right. Rossi. So we were right. Ro Rossi. Rossi. That's good. Should we, uh, you want to, you want to start or we just rapid fire out of the gates? How do you want to play? Let's get him, let's get him warmed up. Well, before we get into anything else, I got to ask him because he's kind of, I mean, Austrians are tough and you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger and I think Marco maybe works out as much as Arnold did. But before we do that, I got to talk about the chin because uh -huh. that, I mean, that's, that's pretty fresh. Yeah. The, the scar, how many stitches there? Uh, so it was 16 outside and 10 from the inside. So it went like, what do you mean inside? So they like had to put stitches like deep inside, inside of your lip. Yeah, not not like from my mouth inside. Oh, yeah. It's like from still from the outside, but like inside, you know, like. 
like at any point are you kind of like man like can i just catch a break because <laughs> yeah you've had a tough goal <laughs> yeah training camp things are going pretty well why don't i just get kicked in the face with a skate let's just let's just ice this cake yeah right. i mean it was unlucky but i still it was like lucky at the same time you yeah know, it could have been much worse my teeth or my throat and so i was lucky about that because when it happened i was telling the trainers oh my god i'm so lucky it's just my chin and they were like you got just some like kicked with your skate, you know, like. But um, how did it happen? Uh, what was the? What you ta got tangled up with the skate, or what happened? Yeah, it was kind of weird because um, I went to Duham and Duham kind of fell a little bit, so his skate went up and I fell forward. Ugh. And then the skate right to the old chops. Yeah. Does any part of you wish that your beard was a little thicker, a little fuller, because maybe it could have been like a nice little cage to protect your chin there? Because yeah. I suffer from the same. I've got no facial hair, and I have a lot of zippers on my chin. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of looks cool, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. take it. That's, cool. <laughs> That's great to have a scar. You know what? Like hey, that. by the way, people should know. I think Minnesota doesn't fall under this category. Now, we'll get to this. Are you married? No. See, that's money left on the table. There are certain states through... What, what does that mean, there's money left on the table? Through work comp, workers' compensation. So in New York, okay, if you're single and you're playing in New York, let's say against the Rangers, yep. and you were to get those stitches on your face, yeah. you, could, you get money through work comp for stitches in your face if you're unmarried. If you're married, then you don't get any money. Huh. huh. So it's like it's like... The your work made you less beautiful, so that workers' compensation makes up for that. But I think it made him more beautiful. I mean, a hockey that was like star. the trick in the minors, like in the mine. Yeah, in hockey the, scars are so cool. Yeah. I, I mean, if I could buy that in a silent auction and just add that, I would add that. Yeah, I don't know what I'd pay for it, but I, I would rather have that than not have anything. Yeah, in the minors, you're like super pumped because it, it was like an extra few thousand bucks if you got a couple stitches in New York, but. Can you see? I got one from Beerly. Can you kind of see it there a little bit? No, nothing? <laughs> no, we can't see it. Let's hit him with rapid fire. Okay, the, the goal here is just to answer him. Uh, we need to get to know you uh, a little bit. So uh, Speed matters. If you don't know the answer, just say pass. Okay. He's all speed. Yep. Nickname? I don't have one. Who do you text the most? Family. Weirdest thing in your overnight bag? Nothing. <laughs> no. uh, Netflix, Hulu. Are you on your own accounts, or do you still borrow your parents, or do they still pay for your cell phone? Same kind of thing. My own one. I have my own one. Okay, yeah. he's got his own. He's a yeah. big boy. I got a big boy here. Boy. What do you listen to in the car? German music. Uh, what's your first real job? Have you had a real job? No. Hockey is your hockey. first job. Hockey, yeah. You earned your first dollar playing hockey. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> it's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? Like your favorite restaurant? Probably like back home, I would go to a schnitzel place. A little so schnitzel? Here. But here in America, probably to a steakhouse. Nice. <laughs> that's nice. You have any pet peeves? No. Pet peeves? Yeah, that's like something that annoys you. Oh. Like or bothers you that people do... Like if the toilet paper is on the roll the wrong way, like just different things like that. You know, like noises sometimes when it's queechy, you know, like. Yes. Really high, like, that. like in the car. Yeah. Sometimes that gets me. Yeah. Um, so you, you get a green light, you're on the road, and the coach just says you guys can go out and have a fun night. What city would you like to be in to do that? NHL city. I really like Montreal. That's really, really fun. Yeah. Good spot. Great spot. Uh. I know you're not a drinker, but let's say the team's going out to the bar. What, like, what, what are you gonna order? Probably a Coke. <laughs> Hockey jersey you had as a kid? Uh, my hometown team. Who do you? Who's your favorite social media follow? Probably Leo Messi. Ah, uh, nice pregame meal. A pasta. I think we already got this one. You already say cheat meal? No. Yeah. What's your favorite cheat meal? Schnitzel. Schnitzel. Yeah. We're going to have to get to the bottom of the schnitzel. Perfect weekend. What are you doing? Probably hiking and just be with the friends and family. Have you ever climbed a mountain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hidden talent? Uh, I can juggle. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> to, be yes. to be continued. Uh, gift card from any store? Apple. 
Last thing you binged watched. I've been TV, binge watched. TV or like movie. Watched a lot of. Last thing you kind of like. Really you watch a show, then you have to watch like six in a row. I just watched uh, David Beckham. I just, I just started. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. that's good. I like it. Um, if you're buying clothes, where do you go? Zara. Yeah, Zara. Favorite holiday. Uh, Christmas. And who would play you in the movie? Like an actor yeah. that reminds you of you. I don't know. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Get the chopper. The Arnold. I'll be back, Marco. Um, you want to start? Maybe get into the hockey All right, journey. so, like, tell us what schnitzel actually is. Is is it chicken? Yeah, is it chicken? I think it's yeah, pork. It's, you can get both, right? Uh, it's wheel. Wheel? Yeah. Veal. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I did not know that. Veal you can schnitzel. have pork, too, but um, the traditional is wheel. And then it's just pounded really thin. Pounded really thin, and then it um, goes in, um, what's the? Breading. Uh, what's the white stuff called again? Flour. Flour, then in eggs. And then in like um, breadcrumbs, and you put it in oil. It's basically shore lunch. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's so nice. The Austrian shore lunch. Yeah, that's that's good. In New York, they do these chicken cutlet sandwiches. Same deal, just pounded down, crispy. Yeah, I, I want to. Where where do we get good schnitzel in St. Paul? Well, you, I, I don't know. I've looked up some places, um, but um, I don't really find one. But I would he's like. He's got to come out to our neck of the woods. White Bear has schnitzel? Yeah, so you have to play Logger's Trail or you golfer at all. And then you go over to the gas house. Remember that place? Yeah. Yeah, and then you get, like, a German beer. They they The servers dress up in, like, traditional German attire. The beer is Later poured Hosen. into steins. Yeah, and then it's, you know, it's like German potato salad, sausages, schnitzel. Kids love it. I'd like more schnitzel in my life. Um can you talk a little bit? Of, you've had quite you're, a hockey. You're full of schnitzel. <laughs> you've had quite a hockey journey, um, all the way back. It looks like your dad was driving you two hours each way. You were in mm-hmm. Switzerland. Um, can you just talk about growing up and some of the 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 process to get you to the NHL? Where should I start? <laughs> <laughs> Three years old. No, just when did you know you're going to be a player? Yeah, you when know, did like, you know you had? Some? Like at some point, you know you're good, and that's when you're like, all right, I better double down on the work here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it all started when I had to make the decision to go to Zurich because that was like a commitment I had to make because um, my whole family had to do that commitment. You know, like I was, it was far away, but um, I remember my dad um, brought everyone together, and he was like, Mark has a good opportunity to go to Zurich. But um, it takes a lot of time to bring him there and back, and you won't see him a lot. So um, if you got everyone like want to support him, then it's not gonna be easy. But um, maybe he gets closer. You know what his dream is, and that one was like, whatever your dream is, we will support you. And that's how it started. Then, yeah. So tell us about the family. Like it's you, and what do you have? Brother, sisters? Uh, uh, two older sisters. Two older sisters. Yeah. So you're the baby. I'm the baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that story, by the way, I, I think you might be the most wholesome hockey player I've ever met. Like the family gathering, we have an opportunity to support Marco's dream. It's like a Little House in the Prairie or something. It's outstanding. And then when you got to the OHL, what happened that you just popped off MVP, you know, 120 points in 56 games? Talk about that season and what, uh, you know, what it felt like and kind of what was clicking. Yeah, so my, I mean, the year before, it was my first season in North America. The ice service is smaller, so everything is different, and you need to adjust and get used to that. And coming in my second season, I felt really comfortable, and I was just like, it was clicking everything, you know, and I um, had really good line mates. And um, so, yeah, it was just going for me. That's great. Just scoring, scoring, scoring. Yeah. Boom, drafted. It's Minnesota Wild, not mm-hmm. a big deal. What uh, have you? How are you going to pay back the your sisters? Like, yeah, so the whole family moves. It's a commitment for everybody. Like, at, at some point, are you, like, do you buy them something when you sign that big ticket? You get the bonus money. Like, you take them out for schnitzel. Like, what what'd you do? Yeah, I mean, I always try to pay something w- when they need anything, and I'm always there for them. So, um, he, this is like just it sounds like, like the greatest. This is the family everybody <laughs> strives to be. I feel like, uh, I mean, it's just we're we're gonna find we're we'll we'll find something here. <laughs> he likes Formula One. We can, maybe there's this we'll we'll let's, get we'll get there. You are a, let's get to your you're a good dude. Your your Minnesota family now. When you first came 
over, you were staying with Thomas Vanek, yeah. correct? Correct. Tell us about his place. I every, mean, every detail. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a sick house, first of all. Yeah, it is, right? Really big. And, Did you um, get lost? Yeah. No, I didn't it's get huge, lost. isn't it? It's really big, yeah. Really yeah. big. Um <laughs> I wasn't outside because it was like in winter, you know. Because you couldn't snowing. find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, I couldn't really go out there, you know, because it was just snow everywhere, so I didn't want to go out there. But I mean I had my basement pretty much everything for me and that was really big. Yeah, so tell us like like what you'd you'd go into the basement and then you'd have your choice whether you wanted to go in the sauna, the mm. steamer, the golf, the the sport court, like you'd like is there anything? Yeah, so my bedroom I had there <laughs> and then was like the shower, steam room, sauna. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they had the golf you got a golf simulator in there too and are you sure you weren't at a lifetime athletic club? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the same <laughs> size. Yeah, then you had like um what's it called? Eight pool or pool? Yeah, yeah. pool billiards. Yeah, pool. billiards. And I did a big couch, T V, like a hockey room to shoot and yeah, it's really nice. Most it, importantly, how was the food there? Pretty good. Yeah, like he's a good cook. Yeah, he cooked. Um so I was really surprised by that because I didn't know if he can cook. But um he cooked for me and it was really good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Does he have bubble hockey? You know, the bubble and the, the hockey game? I don't know. Mm, no. Missed opportunity. <laughs> no bumper pool either. Um, what do you like? What do you think about your uh, your line mates this year? I think it's pretty cool to be playing with uh, Moose and, and Freddie. I thought that, that one shift when Reeves was running around uh, yeah, we going gotta... after people. And whenever Marcus throws a helmet, it just is like – it's just like I'm in the Roman Coliseum again. It's amazing. So what, what's it like on that line? How are you feeling uh, with those two guys? I feel really comfortable around them. You know, I'm not just like on the ice, off the ice too. I mean, first of all, they're really great guys and have a lot of good um, person personalities. And um, so, yeah, I mean, first of all, they're like really experienced. You know, they can teach me a lot on and off the ice. And um, so it's really fun to be around them and um, playing together. It was pretty selfish of Marcus to go offside on what would have been your first NHL yes. goal, right? And I can't believe he did that. But uh, did, now he said he was maybe going to take you out for dinner. Did he Did he take you out and buy you a dinner yet? Uh, we wanted to go in Montreal, but then um, we couldn't go, but next time. So he is going to honor that. Yeah, of course. Uh, you hold him to that. Now, we were trying to remember, didn't you have the same thing happen last year where something got, like, you, they took it away, or were we making that up? Maybe that was someone else. Yeah, it wasn't me. Okay, so just, just the one time, but but you had the, uh, the we should get into that. I, I don't know that everyone knows how amazing, um, I mean, you've had to battle here, like the, the COVID thing. Yeah, was, it's a roller coaster. It was, was crazy. I, I was just reading your quote from back then. I'm just happy to, to still be alive. You know, you really got um, tangled up with the COVID when that all went down. So what was that like fighting through that? And now you're 10, 15 pounds heavier. You're probably starting to feel like yourself again. What's it been like to go through that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy. Um, it was tough because, um, first of all, there was like when I was at Thomas Vanek's house and they did like the medical testing and then they told me or they called me and they were like, don't do anything, no sport anymore and um, just lay down and um, yeah, just don't do any sport and I was just shooting before I was sweating really hard you know so I was like really like surprised by that and I was like okay what's going on so then they told me like next morning you have to go to the hospital that's how it all started you know like meetings appointments after again how did you know like what were you feeling like did you have a positive test and then and then it just got worse and worse or what, what, would, what would it feel like so in November I got tested positive for COVID and mm -hmm. in Zurich. That's when I played in Zurich for that off like COVID season. And um but I just played one game and then I got like COVID. I was out like for two weeks, just like the normal like quarantine and mm -hmm. yeah, to do some testing, blood works and stuff. And then after I felt normal but just like a lot of fatigue, you know. I was always tired and then the World Junior Championship started in Edmonton and that's how it felt like it's not me, you know, like when you play, you kind of feel how, how you play and stuff. But I was like, I'm gassed. And after like 20 second shifts, I was like gassed and I had to change all the time. And um, trainers were coming on and were like, are you good and stuff? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's so weird. I just feel tired. So they gave me a Coke. <laughs> Maybe it helps, you know, because <laughs> um, like in Thanks. that moment, you don't really think about like yeah. serious stuff. But um, then afterwards, I went to Minnesota 
because then when the season started, you know, in January and then, yeah, the, I had to do the testing and stuff and then they told me um, you have something going on and they didn't really know at the beginning what it was, so I had to wait and more testing and then when we found out, um, Billy came up to me and was like, um, we want you to go home, be around the family because it's a serious stuff, you know, and um, for mentally it's um, important to have like um, people around you because if you're alone, you know, every day, I don't know if it really helps you and you will think all the time about that, you know, and when you have something going on like that, you need to have, I don't know, like peace and positive stuff around you. So, um, yeah, then I went home and took me like six months, um, or I had to recover six, six months, and then I had to get back to work. Wow. So now, is this, how do you, you've gained weight, you're even, even stronger, you've had a very strong start to the season. Do you just, do you finally just feel like yourself and even better now? Yeah, um, it's the first time um, that I say um, I feel much better than before COVID. Um, it's the first time, so um, I mean, 15 pounds is um, helped me a lot. I mean, uh, Matt Harder did a really good job with me. Um, I stayed the summer here because that was my goal to get faster, stronger, and um, my goal is to play here. You know, so um, and then Matt told me like what we have to work on, what we have to do, and. Um, so yeah, that's then, I, at the end I gained 15 pounds, and I mean, it helped me a lot, or it helps me a lot on the ice, and I just feel really comfortable out there. So do you kind of feel like you're a, a younger version of Erickson Eck right now? Now let me run through this, because <laughs> last year training camp, you know his nickname is Mr. September, and I know you just said in rapid fire you don't have a nickname, so maybe you're trying to, you're trying to yeah. take Mr. Yeah. September, but last year training camp, what do you have, like nine points in seven games? pretty impressive this year you come in another great training camp it's like september's kind of your time a little bit now i see you out on the ice scoring goals where he scores getting as many face washes as he gets and i'm starting to wonder like hey marco are you trying to like surplant erickson eck as the league leader in face washes i don't know i've seen you take quite a few this year let me have your thoughts on that um yeah, I mean, first of all, um, in the summer, my goal was, like like I said, to get stronger. And, yeah. and of course, when you get stronger, you feel more comfortable. And um, I always go sometimes under the skin, you know, and go to the other guys because I'm not really afraid. But, I mean, when you gain 15 pounds, you're more confident. You you're feeling to, a little bigger. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, of course, you go to that areas more. Yeah. And so then these things happen, so of course. So you're gonna get like a face wash strategy. Like th I feel like you need there needs to be like a counter to it. Like we we should probably work our way through this. If you get a face wash and the guy's taller than you, there's not much you can really do. He's got a long reach, right? So we, we're gonna have to think about like maybe don't drop your stick, push his laces so that he falls a little bit, something. But we'll have to we'll have to review the video. But we can't have you taking that. Well, Eck Eck was actually punched in the face by a ref the other night, so I, I'm pretty sure he's still, <laughs> he's, he's still winning. He's, still like, got he, it. he's not he's not losing that spot. When a ref just punches you in the face, bare knuckle too. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's like Nordberg from uh, Naked Gun. As, um, aside from your dad. Well, I'm guessing this would be the obvious answer. If it's not, feel free to answer it otherwise. But, like, who's your hockey idol? Yeah, it's my dad because yeah. it all started with him, you know, because I looked up to him, and um, that's how I played hockey then. But then it was Pavel Datsuk. Datsuk? Yeah. Uh, the wizard. Yeah. yeah he's what, what about one. his game did you like? You know, is it – so you grew up, uh, like, watching Detroit or – Not really Detroit. It was just watching him, like, mm -hmm. on YouTube, you know, um, I just like not like that he scored goals. I mean, you know, just like how smooth he was, how smooth he was, and how he like recovered pucks and stuff. Yeah, that's how it was. Impressive. Reverse hits, mm. sneaky, strong. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like any of those aspects. And like he was really good in defensive zone too. Yeah, you know. So yeah. no, it's crazy too because like the international game. Like, what hockey did you grow up watching? Because I don't know. Like, is the NHL popular in Austria or is it more? Because I felt this way that the world championships are like the Super Bowl for European teams, you know, like they, they, they care more about world championships and those kinds of tournaments than they do NHL and Stanley Cup. Like what kind of hockey did you grow up watching? NHL. I mean, if you play hockey and you're around hockey guys, then of, of course you watch NHL, you know. But if you're not really like a hockey guy and you just like watch sometimes hockey, then I mean, it's more fun probably for them to watch <laughs> international because it's your team, it's your country. So, yeah. 
Sorry to cut you off, Kinger. So you've traveled all over, you know, I was just looking at your Instagram, you know, Dubai, Italy, Greece, but you spent the summer in Minnesota. So what do you love about Minnesota? Like, give me, like, show me some, you're becoming Minnesotan. Are there places you like to go? Are there restaurants, you know, fast food places you gain 15 pounds? Give me a little Minnesota love. What do you love about the state of hockey? Yeah, I mean, I've never been here in the summer before, so I didn't really know what was going to expect me. And um, I didn't know it was that hot in the summer. That surprised me. And, I mean, all the lakes, you know, it's really beautiful. Be at the lakes, just hanging out there. And I really like Maynard's. That's a nice spot there. <laughs> nice. And um, yeah, especially um, at the um, lakes, you know, at the Minnetonka area. Yep. It's really nice to go there. And so, yeah. That's great. Um, we hear you like this food, Kaiser. Sharn? Schmarren. Yes, the Emperor's Mess. What, what, what is this, and, and can we buy this in Minnesota? Uh, you can't buy it, no. Uh, <laughs> you have to cook it. Um, Not a quick trip? No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe a sponsorship. Yeah. What is it? Kaiser Scharn. I'm saying it wrong, I know. Uh, it's called Kaiser Schmarn. Yep. And it's... um. It's kind of maybe like pancakes, just like more like stuff together and... So yeah, it's like crepes, kind of. You know what crepes are? Yeah, but um, it's thicker. Yeah, it's really thick, and then they s- scramble it like this. Oh, okay. It's hard to explain. Sure, but it's it sounds good. It's good, yeah. Yeah, like syrup. What goes on it? Syrup? No syrup. Uh, it's um, chocolate. Syrup. Lingonberries. Oh, lingonberries. Yeah. Oh, they always keep coming back. <laughs> like I put lingonberries <laughs> in, but traditionally it's like, you know, apple mousse. It's like apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. So, Summer, what do you do for fun? Like, I heard you like to cycle. Like, now, do you cycle? Do you ride a fat tire bike? Like, what kind of bike are you jumping on? Uh, like or is it a stationary bike? Are you just no, a like machine? a fin bike, you know, like a... Yeah, road, road bike. Is it a road bike? Like Tour de France road yeah, bike? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't wear, like, a biking outfit, do you? Like, like you're... I wear, yeah. But is it like a, <laughs> a, like a pretend team? Like, you're wearing oh. a, you know, like a U.S. Postal Service uh. outfit, even though you're not on that team? Or is it just a standard bike? No, outfit? just a standard one. Thank God. <laughs> and do, do the shorts have pads in it? Because, you know, they yeah, do have they pads. Do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went out, I had a road bike, and I went out and bought, like, a granny seat for it. And it's funny, because the purists will look at you like, man, like, that's not okay. You can't have that granny seat. And it's like, but why? I, I don't want to. I, I want to sit down the rest of the day. Bicycle seat or a banana seat. That's kind of <laughs> what I thought. Hey, you had a great year in the A. Um, who are who are your buddies from that? You know this this Iowa team is looking to be one of the best teams in the American League this year. A lot of these guys are coming up and down. Sammy was here mm-hmm. uh, this week. Do you, and obviously, I think you played with Boldy for an extended stay down there. What do you have a little group that you kind of consider your generation on the Wild that you're tight with? Uh, was last year was really tight with Jesper and with Simon, like these yep. two, because I met them in Defca one time, and yeah, I mean, we understood us really good, and since then we're in contact and texting each other almost every day. Does that mean you're like a gamer then too, like you computer video game guy? Because no, we had Jesper on, and that's what Jesper is a gamer, <laughs> but I'm not a gamer. <laughs> like I play some, like what I play is maybe with the guys like um, Nintendo FIFA. Switch yeah. or FIFA. But like not Call of Duty and stuff. No, I yeah. guess I don't play that. So rapid fire. You said you've climbed a mountain. Mm-hmm. Which mountain? Or is uh, more? Like in my areas, there are a lot of mountains. So um, I was watching a documentary recently. Gosh, this is gonna be terrible content. Good. But it was on uh, like free climbing, like free solo Oof. mountain climbing. And there was a guy from uh, maybe Switzerland. It wasn't Austria, but somewhere around that area. That was climbing like free solo, getting the record mm-hmm. speed records. Like when you climb, is it like no harnesses? Like you just get into the top of that mountain beast mode, or oh, you mean climbing like that? Oh well, yeah, I was hiking. Oh, you hike up? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. yeah, that was a pretty. So this guy, he almost died of COVID. He's got his face slashed up. You want him to go free climbing? No? That's what I was wondering. What kind of climbing uh, is it? Oh, let's no. let's so go you'll easy. hike to the top. Yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not. No. You're not climbing the north face of no. one of those fancy mountains. Uh, not me. And I want to do that, though. I want to do it. You want to you wanna free solo a mountain? Maybe not free solo, but I want to climb a mountain. Let's just stick to making honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, So you're an F1 fan? Yeah, big fan. Okay, now 
it says Red Bull. I, I do all my research on both mm-hmm. Wikipedia and Instagram. Max Verstappen. They're available. Yeah, is that your guy, Max? Yeah, that's my guy. Okay, how come? How come he's your favorite? You watch the Netflix show, I assume? Yeah, but I mean, I started my grandfather always watched Formula One. And since I'm a little kid, always on a Sunday, um, we had like my grandparents did schnitzel for me. So we always were at their like house and he was always watching Formula One. And then after like f- three or four laps, he was sleeping th- for the rest of the race. <laughs> but um, I w- always watched him and he was a Ferrari fan. But um, that's how I kind of get to know if Formula One and then, you know, Max came and since then I really liked him. Isn't that the thing with Formula One though? Like, it's almost the day before that matters. You need to get, you need to have great laps to get your pole positioning. Then you get your pole positioning, and then it's like the start of the race is the most chaotic. And then once you get your spot, for the most part, it's hard to pass. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, so, uh, but like the start is the most exciting. Yeah, the start is the most exciting for sure because so many things can happen, you know, and you can have a bad start at your back in the race, you know, but. I would say the start is really um, interesting, and then of course when the pit stops coming. So, yeah. <laughs> so you have a need for speed, like you like just F one, or do you like everything fast? Because I played with Team Solani too, and that dude did everything fast. He drove his cars fast, he dressed fast, he ate fast. It was just like pure speed from the moment he got yeah. up to the moment he laid down. Maybe a few times, like when I eat, sometimes I eat fast, but I try not to. F- eat too fast sometimes because it's not good for me and um but i don't drive too fast like i drove sometimes really fast but not anymore, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> so let's say let's say you score 50 and uh you sign a huge ticket on your next deal like you're gonna buy like what what kind of fast car would you buy um uh, my favorite is porsche and um, audi these are two of my favorite german cars yeah is porsche german porsche yeah and uh, do you want to have a fashion? Do you want to ask him about fashion? You, yeah, go, uh, I know he likes Zara, but uh, you, we understand you got a pretty prominent suit, maybe silver. How so many suits silver do you have? Tie. Do you kind of have a signature look on and off the airplane? Is that accurate? Mm. Or do you mix it up a lot? I mix it up. Well, that's the one people are noticing a lot. The black pants. Black pants. It's a silver coat, right? Do you have that one? It's like, is that petrol? You know this color, petrol? I think so. I'm going. I don't know that color. Uh, I, I, no, it's German. Um, <laughs> it's like um, dark blue to black, you know. Okay, like, like midnight blue. Yeah. I like that. Well, hey, man, thanks for uh, being with us. I just got a – that story about going to your grandparents, watching F1, eating schnitzel. Grandpa sleeping. Grandpa falling. I, I, I'm pretty sure you're Charlie from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You might be the most wholesome NHL player I've ever met. So I think the whole state's going to be rooting for you. Um, you've had a lot of hardship, and you've battled through it. And uh, so kick some ass this year, will you? And, and stay healthy and uh, and get to your dreams. So we're thank, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Well, thanks to Marco Rossi for sitting with us. Uh, But before we get to the final couple minutes of the podcast, here's another word from our sponsors. Wild on 7th has a brand new sponsor. We couldn't be more excited about them, Cub. If you're looking for some fresh, delicious milk, you're going to want to check out Cub. 48 hours from farm to shelf. You're not going to find that anywhere else. You're going to pay less. So head on into your favorite neighborhood grocery store, Cub, and get yourself some delicious milk. Lean into it and end up with a Jake Middleton-sized milk mustache. Thank you for being here, Cub. Kinger, it's time for 
the AC to be turned off, the heat to be turned on, and if you're looking for a place to get your AC system tuned up, look no further than Aquarius Home Services. In fact, the time to buy is right now. Uh, they're in the midst of their fall blowout sale, so if you want comfort and unbelievable prices, right now they've got a 25% discount on whole home heating and cooling, si cooling systems. And uh, if, hey, heck, if you need water, they've got whole home water solutions by Kinetico too. You gotta act now, the deal doesn't last forever. Uh, get your home heating and cooling systems checked out, or if you're looking for just worry-free water, they've got that there too. But it all starts with a free water analysis. For that, call our friends at AquariusHomeServices.com. I should say check them out at AquariusHomeServices.com. They're earning the right to be recommended. Well, and there you have it from Marco Rossi. Um, again, yeah, schnitzel, family time, crackling fires, lingonberries. Grandpa sleeping while the F1 cars... But also around the track. he does a good job illustrating the work and the commitment that uh, his family's had to put in to get him to be playing in the NHL right now. And um, it, I, you give him credit. He's a very focused guy, very, very ready, and I think he knows what he wants. Not a surprise that he was tight with Jesper Volstead, also a pretty serious young man that uh, we've spoken with. So I could see that those two are – Similar, you know, they got their goals and they're not going to waver. Speaking of goals, we had some big winners at the Wild Content Ooh, Team, Mr. Carter. Yeah. So if you like the stuff the Wild are putting out, well, there's they've just won some. You're uh, not alone. Yeah, you're not alone. They won some uh, Emmys. Is that correct for uh, Sounds of Hockey and some motion graphics and editing and and video work? So um, this team is is killing it from a content standpoint. So congratulations to the wild content team on their uh, their full shelf of hardware. Yeah, how cool is that? It's great. And uh, I got to watch the Sounds of Hockey thing. I guess you don't really watch it. You listen to it, but I got to check that out as well. Yeah, Hockey Day Minnesota. Maybe we can stick it in here. Valley's won one for uh, like best, I think sports programming or, or something too for Hockey Day, White Bear Lake. Go Bears! Yeah, That's that was a, a tough one. one. Fireworks. Yeah, yeah but the, the digital content's great. So if, if you like the, the podcast, any of this stuff, make sure you give it the big thumbs up, smash that like button, hit subscribe. I'm trying to do my best YouTube influencer bit right now. What did you was think good. of it? Was it good? That was good, yeah. You're an unboxer. Yeah. You know, when we both I've noticed like when we both unbox something and and then they'll just share you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess they're the, you're the more the look I've, going. I've never noticed. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it happens. But that's all right. I still, I'm still there. They have those photos of me wearing the sweatshirt should they want to go a different route yeah. later on. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's touch on one last unboxing. So we got to unbox Sammy Walker's yeah. uh, Edina Cake Eater. You should be able to step in here and talk about it. But he had a couple of games. He had a look. The Wild had to change it up. He's on his way back down 35E. Vinny Letary yep. on his way up. Um, I mean, did you when you were watching, what did you see from Sammy Walker? Did And sometimes this is just happenstance circumstance like you don't get a lot of opportunity to play i didn't really see him different. to yeah. be honest i uh i'm a big uh 
buzzer guy. That's what we call Edina Hornets buzzers. Uh, I was going to be like ordering some cake at the St. Paul Hotel after that Kings game when he first came up, but I just didn't really notice him that much. That doesn't mean it did anything wrong, or but uh, maybe wasn't out there in certain situations. Yeah. So, but I, I have high hopes for these. Like Vinny and I'm curious to Sammy see what he's and... going to bring. Vinny, Vinny Letary seems like he knows where he's at in his career. I don't know how old he is. 27, probably 28. He's got the trigger. He's got and like he's going to shoot. He's and got he that knows. Jimmy Snuggerud. He, knows, he wants to score. Whippy stick. Yeah. Um, I think Sammy Walker wants to be like a team player. I'll fit the role that you want. Like you, you like I want to be here. I'm going to prove that to you. I think Vinny Letary is mature to where it's this is what I am. Trigger man. Yeah, I'm sure. Trigger man coming. So, in the wild, maybe need a couple more goals, or we'll see where he spots in. Does he get some power play time? It'll be intriguing, but excited to see what he's going to bring. Yeah, I think let, let's get he rolling with those guys. Goes. The Iowa Wild are loaded. I mean, loaded. Um, and I know that not necessarily all those players are NHL ready, you know, hence our depth issues. But, but yeah, Vinny, these guys should contribute. You know, you're seeing it with Dewey 1 and Dewey 2, and these guys are moving all over the lineup. It would be very helpful to this hockey team if if Vinny can uh, get some in the net here. Yeah, and provide a spark. We need that spark, right? Yeah. He's a he's a nanny. He's got jeans. Yeah, he's got good clothes. He's ready for the big moment. He's got window pane sport coats. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Is that got what they're called teeth. window pane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he comes from that Lou nanny tree. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he smells good. Yeah. He's right. probably got a cigar club you can get into at some point. Uh, yeah, let's root for Vinny. Let's get let's get through the East road trip and uh, and start to figure out. What, First thing, what beat up on there. Edmonton without Connor McDavid. Get yep. through the East road trip and then uh, then. Here's to hoping for a Kirill game or two, and knowing what this hockey team is next time we talk to you. Boom, we're here. Let's here.